very good afternoon to all um, i am very much happy to welcome our uh, former dean horticulture college and research institute periyakulam uh, and uh, founder dean horticulture college and research institute uh, for women trichi dr tn balamogan sir uh, it's a very important day today uh, he has accepted our uh, request for delivering this lecture on myth and reality of organic fruit production and uh, also I, i am very much happy to welcome all my colleagues from department of uh, sorry department of fruit science hatikacha college and research institute koyamuthur and also the staffs uh, colleagues from hatikacha uh, college and research institute uh, periyagulam who has joined uh, in online and uh, all uh, the student friends so who is uh, who are presenting here please uh, students uh, it's a very good topic organic uh, fruit production so when we see the fruit production system we can differentiate into two categories morning we have given a condolence meeting we attended a condolence meeting to dr m s swaminathan sir see when we see the production system we can difference into two categories before independence or after independence or before uh, green revolution or after uh, green revolution so the production system may be entirely changed because of uh, feed to feed the population so when it was uh, only 30 crore population during uh, independence day so we started utilizing uh, all the dwarf and uh, short duration grain varieties and also um, mainly the fertilizers so we have uh, we can say that we are uh, succeeding well to feed the population the pro- fruit production uh, sorry the total production is actually uh, increased now uh, we are concentrating our uh, health side so the purchasing power of the people is uh, changed see everyone are very conscious about uh, the health so ready to purchase uh, good uh, uh, quality produce so that uh, nowadays the, uh, we are talking about uh, organic uh, production of all all the uh, uh, producers but uh, really is it uh, possible or not what's the major problems we are facing when we go for production or marketing side what's the major problem and the consumer side when we get the produce whether it is really uh, organic uh, fruit uh, organic uh, produce or not so lot of questions uh, raised so here we have our uh, former dean uh, dr dn balamogan sir who is uh, who is giving a very good uh, and uh, um, through knowledge on the mainly the fruit production system he was the former uh, professor in the uh, department of fruit science uh, koyamuthur uh, having very good uh, contact with most of the farmers especially the fruit system what is going on around and around the world so having good contact with farmers uh, in uh, giving the delivering the technology so it's a, a very good uh, time for us please uh, students uh, be interact with uh, sir and get uh, update your uh, knowledge thank you sir thank you once again uh, and i welcome uh, our dr solomon uh, sir to deliver the lecture thank you sir dr muthuel doctor sir ah uh, dr uh, <coughs> rajdurai <coughs> Uh, Dr. P. S. Kavita, she only approached me. Why not a, uh, I mean, lecture on organic production? I was a little hesitant to start with, in the sense, you not know, to agree upon. <laughs> And uh, of course, it's a chance for me to meet you again after a long gap, of 13 years, if I'm correct. And Dr. Uh, Samrajendram, Dr. Uh, Kavita. and dr shokumar and my dear my student i think both of them are my student uh, vidya and all uh, dear students uh, uh this is a complicated uh, subject uh, to discuss pan uh, uh, reason being is uh, there are two schools school of thoughts a group of people supporting organic farming and another group of people supporting inorganic farming and each of them now 
both of them are having their own points to i mean uh, stay upon in the sense to stake it then <clears throat> so which side we are going at the end of the lecture i am not very sure <laughs> it's very difficult to uh, take one uh, i mean one side it's either organic or very inorganic so you have a few positives in inorganic and you have few positives in organic and it is very difficult to uh, I mean, uh, I mean, set aside one and say no to this and to yes to this then so anyway i i i am trying to come about with uh, what best actually your understanding i'm not very sure why you are then uh, i have moved with a uh, lot of farmers both for organic as well as inorganic and they have their own problems again and let us discuss why india i mean has chosen uh, 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 i mean a uh, production system supporting inorganic or with organic we previously we were doing pre i mean pre independence no we were doing only organic uh, system of cultivation but little later maybe 1960 after 60 that time no we started working on of course a green revolution is nothing but organic uh, inorganic uh, way of doing agriculture so uh, uh, let us see the history to start with why uh, the policy makers and the politicians uh, uh, they 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 have chosen chosen this uh, uh, farming of course uh, inorganic way of doing agriculture right the first person to say something about uh, 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 the production no production system is uh, none other than uh, rajendra prasad this is before independence 1946 if i am correct he made a statement and uh, say the statement is nothing but like you no know, uh, indian representatives going from one end to the another end of course from uh, one end to the another end from peru to uh, persia with a begging bowl uh, looking for uh, grains so that that's a statement actually all the indian representatives were traveling across the world the begging bowl for grains but by then we were in we were into deep trouble we were not able to get or meet the uh, requirement we were running short of grains grains so uh, if we have the capacity but we are not able to we were not able to produce uh, uh, when the way will we we be liked or we wanted <clears throat> so in 1966 indira gandhi was sworn as sworn in as uh, the prime minister and uh, that all that time also we were in in deep trouble uh, men it say uh, men uh, hand to mouth seems to be very difficult feeding all the people seems to be very difficult we are running short of grains and that time uh, she made a request to president of us and they were all, they were all doing well then they were all doing well they had enough and she approached uh, uh, the us uh, president uh, to support india uh, in the form of grains no give some grains in the sense uh, uh, wheat or uh, some so that time no people used to say it's like a ship to mouth uh, ship to mouth is nothing but uh, on the arrival of ship only we will be able to get our uh, uh, i mean uh, footsteps no food i mean grains either it may be wheat or as i said so on the arrival of uh, ship we will be we will be getting and uh, and all the time now we were looking for ship arrival then and that time no they were men I mean, I mean supplying very small quantity of uh, grains it's not a huge quantity not um, millions of tons no? maybe small quantity and each time no they made us to wait and uh, looking for the arrival it's it's like uh, say uh, i mean uh, it's okay with the uh, the local population in the sense people like us we can accept easily but but the politicians you know they have their own uh, ego and all so why why these people are sending small small quantity and making us to wait of course they agreed upon to supply them but they they were not doing it the way it has to be so uh, finally us uh, agreed to provide 3 million tonnes to india 
3 million ton as well. It's a huge quantity, you know, that uh, they can able to manage for some extent. But one with one condition, the, con the country, you know, Indian, you know, we should support a non-proliferation treaty. This was the uh, condition posed on to her. By the time the war was going on, the Vietnam War was going on, uh, the American president, I think Johnson or something, like that, he was actually asking the then president, or pre prime minister, to support the treaty. But she was reluctant. She was reluctant. By then, the Daily New York Times made fun of the Prime Minister Indira Gandhi. There was a care catcher. I mean, I uh, would say normally, you no, know, uh, while begging, you no, know, in those days, the, we used to uh, hold this sari uh, for uh, collecting the grains. So this caricature was there in the, I mean, I mean, I mean depicted in the paper. Uh, that that made her to, of course, it's it's say, uh, actually, I'm there to, uh, I mean, uh, get some help. And if you make fun out of it, just imagine what will be the, uh, I mean, I mean, the condition of those people now. She was under uh, tremendous pressure. And uh, she was pushed in the sense, somehow, I mean, she wanted to come out of the crisis. So then Prime Minister uh, Indira Gandhi wanted to come out of the crisis. And uh, say the Green Revolution started there on. They agreed upon and uh, they made fun out of us. And she was in total crisis in the sense in a, the depression like. And uh, she has to do something. and. Uh, this is how the Green Revolution passed through the uh, crisis. No, it's not so easy. I mean, we can easily read and uh, we can uh, go to the next uh, these things. But uh, it's, it's a very great. Uh, so uh, uh, she took the, I mean, the, then took the birth of the uh, Green Revolution. This is how Green Revolution started. Suppose if we, if we see the, uh, the, the famine in India, so over a period of 300 years, it started in the year 1770. Bengal for men, 10 lakh people, then Thalisa for men, another 11. Likewise, no, every 10 years, 15 years, and you will be losing lakhs and lakhs of people. And the huge one was actually in the year 1876 to 78, that was around 60 lakh to 1 crore rupees, 1 crore population. This is the huge, huge one. And thereon, actually, uh, the Indian famine again, Indian famine in 90s. The, the last one was in the year 1946, 43. That was actually, uh, I mean, in Bengal. Uh, there again, uh, people used to say uh, it was created by the British by then. The British, uh, they, they collected all the grains over there for the soldiers because the soldiers were fighting then. So uh, the, the materials, I mean, the food grains were taken away from the uh, I mean, vicinity, I mean, the Bengal, and uh, that's the reason why the starvation started. Uh, the famine started, famine, I mean, uh, they were into famine. But another, uh, these things, no, uh, a story is there. The British took some time to mobilize the material from some other place to Bengal, uh, due to delay in, um, in transport, the famine was into into the I mean, larger extent. So somehow, uh, death was there, famine was there very much actually, uh, uh, I mean, uh, nobody can stop it in the sense. And uh, these, these, I mean, I mean, uh, frequent famines over a period of time, no, and a, 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 a frequent interval, maybe 10 or 15 years, every now and then, uh, made us to think, or the politicians, so something we need to bring in, in the sense, you no, know, we, we need to be very sure of producing uh, uh, food grains year after year, uh, without any, I mean, without any compromise, in the sense, you no, know, they wanted to do it uh, uh, surely. So, uh, it's it's a time, you no, know, a few people joined together, of course, uh, one, among them, one among them is uh, uh, Dr. M. Swaminathan, then, uh, 
C. Subramaniam and the Swaraman, if I'm correct, one one IAS officer or something like that, who who involved in uh, I mean collecting the seats from different uh, parts of the country as well as parts of the world. So these three pe people worked together and uh, they started, uh, of course, coming out with how to come about from this uh, issue. Like, see, so in 1960, this actually I read long back. Uh, a pers person by name Paul is a biologist, American biologist. Uh, people used to say he's a pessimist, making statements of his own choice. In the sense, you know, he's not he's not bothered about anybody for that matter. He used to make uh, and statements of his own, and uh, he came about like, you know, India have no future unless the thermonuclear bomb kills them. And the Indian will die like sheep going to slaughterhouses. And this was a statement by Paul. But some extent it is real, true again. Because if you see the population growth, it was actually jumping like anything. And com comparing the food production, the growth was so slow. At one point of time, we have to pay the penalty. Maybe during 1970s. They predicted 70s we will be into deep trouble because the, the, by then the production will be too low to meet the requirement of the growing population. So uh, these are all the issues why we are pushed towards inorganic or leaving organic behind us. So uh, all these things you now uh, by then. Uh, uh, I mean, many of us know there is one scheme, if I'm correct, PL 480. There is a scheme by name PL 480 with which we are getting grains from US. But by then, we are not paying US as dollars. So when you buy, uh, I mean, I mean, grains from US, we were not paying dollars because we are not having dollars by then. So we were paying only rupees. U.S. was so reluctant to get rupees and to supply the grains. Suppose if you if you pay dollars, no problem. I mean, I mean actually, if I pay dollars to America or any other country for that matter, getting uh, grains from them is not a, not not at all an issue. But under PL 480, we were paying Indian money, getting the seeds. So Americans are reluctant to supply those things. So there are quite a lot of complications. No, as I said. So, uh, as I said, uh, actually, the critical period is between 1960 and uh, 1965. That's a very critical period. The, the by then the population was 50 lakh, 50 crores. Sorry, 50 crores. In the initial pre-independence it was 30, 30 crores. In the year 19, uh, I mean, of course, uh, during the period you no know, 60, 65, the, uh, uh, the the population was around 50 crores, and the production was too little, 70 million tonnes which is uh, far below the requirement. So th 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 this is where we are actually thinking, and I mean, uh, uh, I mean, taking hard decisions uh, to meet the requirement. Hard decisions in the sense, by then everybody knows bringing in chemical is a dangerous one. One, one, one story about uh, use of fertilizers now, after the Second World War, the companies, big companies producing chemicals for warfare requested the then leaders what to do with the industries they have. Second, once, once Second World War is over, the industries supplying chemicals for making bombs and other things, no, they were asking what to do with industries because uh, nobody is there to buy to make bombs and all. And those companies say they need to uh, supply those material to somebody else. Maybe uh, third world countries or who is in need of chemicals. See, this is how it was siphoned out like we started, actually they made these chemicals as fertilizers. So uh, 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 there are companies to, I mean, there are people to satisfy because they were supplying chemicals. And uh, those leaders involved in uh, actively involved in uh, Second World War, they have to help them politically. So those companies, they are, they started producing huge quantity of fertilizers. They are coming in as uh, 
as uh, i mean uh, i mean uh, agriculture inputs so somehow no this, this are all the complications so realizing all these things the then prime minister lal bahadur shastri made an appeal to the people to skip one meal a day say someone was telling like a person a topmost person in the, in the office indian office making one such statement is not so easy say we are running short of food and uh, everyone should eat and uh, say uh, the the wealthier one if if they skip one meal probably the, the poorest of poor can able to get along with of course they can uh, live for a few more days or few more weeks or few more months or something like that so this is how uh, uh, the issue and uh, he gave the slogan jai uh, jawan jai kisan so we had a very good leaders by then uh, uh real patriotic people because they fought, fought for independence now the coming to uh, the features of green revolution say they 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 were together a scientist bureaucrat politicians all the people were together and they came about with uh, a, a design or or a system or whatever it, uh, you you name it and they name it as green revolution and this, they started working on so now the first and foremost thing is introduction of high yielding varieties all these things they think they think say our local varieties may give uh, four or five bags of uh, paddy uh, these these hybrids may give another four more four more bags no 10 bags or something like that so by then it was so important so it say we are very much in need of uh, food grains now if you get even one one more uh, in a bag more than the normal production you will come at so introduction of high yielding varieties then balanced nutrition through chemical and organic fertilizers but they didn't say uh, not to use organics they 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 recommended you go ahead with organic but along with organic you have to apply inorganic chemical fertilizers so that uh, uh, yield can be uh, men you will be getting a better yield so that uh, we can get rid of these issues i mean i mean from the low production to a uh, i mean sustainable production or something like that so now uh, crop production by use of conventional and synthetic pesticides providing irrigation at critical stages use of machineries so these are all the uh, features of green revolution uh, 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 they started getting help from all over the world all over the i mean across the country Uh, the only aim is to boost the production uh one thing we should uh, we should not uh, forget if somebody is going to die today if it's possible for me to extend it for one more week so you th- there is no pa- i mean uh, i mean uh, saying oh this is wrong or that and it's wrong or something like that so uh, we we are going to extend the life of a person and there you cannot you cannot work out like this is poisonous this is uh, non poisonous or something like that when somebody is going to die then actually you are going to uh, give a tumbler of uh, uh, water you will not be checking whether the water is loaded with chemicals or microbes or something that somehow you have to feed them whether it is uh, right stuff or wrong stuff is it th- this is so their situation is like that now so uh, uh, they 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 i mean i mean organize themselves uh, in such a way that in enhancing the production was the one and the only uh, issue just in front of them and um, everybody worked towards that and one one information to the young people during that time farmers was all most of the farmers were reluctant to use fertilizers no farmer is ready to use fertilizers but what had happened now the department people the aos they were requested they are or or forced to dissolve the fertilizers in the farmers field so these these agricultural assistants say they go and uh, dissolve these fertilizers in the field and uh, they last they, they they get the farmers no and that uh, I mean show them this is the field where i've used 5 uh, uh, kilos of uh, urea see the growth of the plant 
this is how no say say any new technology by then no in i mean i mean the form of fertilizers i mean salt farmers were very much reluctant to use those things they were also afraid of right of right in the sense so when you i mean bring in fertilizers no which is which is not uh, common to them or new to them we may not altogether totally new to them they were re- men are reluctant to use those fertilizers by then and uh, Uh, the department was say they, that uh, officials were forced to use i mean i mean uh, uh, throw these chemicals into the farm farmers field and this is how all these things so now uh, uh, a revolution green revolution with all these uh, 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 I mean, I mean, issues they started meanwhile one person by name uh, Ma- masonobo pikako how many of you read uh, this book i'm not very sure this this fellow wrote a book yeah one straw revolution one straw he's basically he's a microbiologist he's a microbiologist i think i actually i i i call him as a terrorist he's it's one end of organic one end of organic in the sense uh, he's actually he's not recommending any organic fertilizers he's not recommending any bio pesticides he's not recommending anything into the farm <clears throat> leave the land as such the land on its own will produce and give back to you then no tillage no sowing of seeds no weeding nothing so the four principles why i'm telling you, you, you need to know about uh, the status of uh, organic by then by somebody who is not connected with uh, india so a uh, four principles of uh, this fellow is no cultivation don't do anything no chemical fertilizers or prepared compost from outside just leave it say he was telling don't do kill any insect because one insect uh, uh, during this period is is a pest next 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 time it will act as a predator this is the concept of uh, masana fikoko quite interesting but at one point of time it's boring <laughs> uh, the reason being is all these stuffs now it's not so easy for the common people to consume and live uh, most of them are actually very difficult to consume the difficult to consume in the sense of the final product you are getting it from masano's field a saint can live with those produce but uh, a normal human being cannot lead a life with uh, masano's uh, materials in the sense you no know, uh, produce from the field so such uh, hardy materials uh, someone was telling then when 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 someone was crossing the field uh, there was a huge uh, pumpkin a pumpkin used to be like a rock Uh, say uh, such a hardy material how come one can cook and eat so uh, the, uh, so many things so no weeding no tillage no dependence on chemicals or something that this is one side uh, and another side in the organic you can use uh, bodo mixture bodo mixture is not a uh, chemical or something and because it's being collected easily i mean we got it from the earth so this is one side uh, compromising a lot in the one side uh, masano fikako say you need to understand masano fikako is one side and uh, uh, liberal organic people is on another side and we have so many people in between and one among them is uh, uh, alwar what his name is nam alwar say uh, I, i i don't want to pass any comment on him but say uh, in a in a democratic con- uh, I mean, country like india anybody anybody can say anything of, of his own choice no Uh, uh right so these are all the principles of uh, masano and uh, coming to the indian scenario we were actually having enough area 5.39 million hectares producing 2.9 million tonnes and among the state maharashtra madhya pradesh is the leading one and uh, we were we were actually producing so many uh, items now uh, organically we are Uh, we have uh, quite a lot of numbers we we need we, we are the i mean uh, uh, as far as uh, uh, farms are concerned maximum number of farms are here in india organic farms uh, this is actually an organic uh, mango i'd been to uh, seattle i mean uh, 
I stayed there for about two months. I am very much fond of mangoes. Uh, most of the mangoes are coming from either Mexico or uh, nearby place. Uh, this is a variety from Mexico. It resembles dasheri. Uh, only problem with uh, dasheri is actually this this variety is it is devoid of uh, uh, the aroma, the mango smell. Very much uh, devoid of mango smell. But taste wise, it's okay then. Uh, but uh, smell wise, it is not as good as uh, Indian mangoes. Indian mangoes are known for uh, their smell, or the TSS, all these things. No. Uh, just by smelling, you won't say you, you feel like eating null. But these mangoes are uh, almost devoid of, uh, say, mango smell, and uh, uh, taste is okay then. So uh, th this is still organic stores. See, uh, before getting into the other side of it, you no, know, let me talk about uh, the American way of doing uh, organic farming. Uh, in the year 2004, I visited the Michigan State University wherein uh, we were introduced a group of organic farmers. One, one uh, person from the university is called, his name is William Barnabas, William Barnabas, with a ponytail. Normally, the organic people used to be a little different from the normal. Either they used to wear actually ponytail or they have a long uh, cholna pai. You can easily differentiate them. Uh, or the dressing and all be totally different. But actually, uh, uh, maybe, you know, to differentiate from others, uh, they used to have uh, such type of these things. So this fellow, uh, when I visited uh, 2004 or 5, if I'm correct, um, he said, to start with, in America, there were about 79, actually in, in Michigan state alone. I'm not talking about any other state. Uh, Michigan is a... Uh, state known for its uh, civilization management and they were good at uh, tough making. And there are quite a lot of uh, land grant universities in US and each university is known for one or other uh, uh, subjects. So Michigan is known for its uh, post harvest handling, uh, supply chain management and also tough management. So they used to have uh, tough no thousands of acres to so, uh, astonished to she see a vast area under uh, uh, green grasses so uh, actually uh, the, the fellow was attached with the uh, michigan state university and I, he gave a lecture to us we were uh, six people from um, in tnau and he gave a lecture and uh, the content is this to start with uh, they were having around 80 plus organic farmers. In a span of three, three and a half years, the number was reduced to 40 or 45. In country like America, nobody is ready to buy organic materials for two obvious reasons. One is organic fruits are not as fresh as that of inorganic fruits. They are not looking fresh. They are not bright in color. They are not attractive. So they are not interested in buying it. And price wise, they are one and a half to two times more than the inorganic materials. Price is again a, 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 a limiting factor to promote organic. Okay. So uh, this is in short about uh, they, they, they collect all these things from all over and i've seen most of the organic uh, bo in, uh, i mean uh, uh, boxes they remain for longer time because very few people will come and pick those boxes it's a once in a way so all other boxes will be moving on a very fast uh, these things but these uh, organic boxes actually i used to visit every day and i don't have any work over there so I used to visit every now and then the shop, actually, which is actually the, the, the shop name is uh, Fred Mayer. Uh, from my house, it's about, uh, from my son's house, it's about three kilometers. I, I used to walk and I used to see those uh, garden, I mean, uh, the, the mall every now and then. And most of the organic materials are, are slow moving, but nobody there since because the cost is very high then. And uh, especially in the case of avocados, avocado, 
uh, uh, one fruit cost us around two, three dollars, hundred and fifty rupees. It's a small, no. Uh, the size may be a duck egg. It's not so big then. Maybe around hundred and fifty grams a piece. Uh, dark in color, hoss. The uh, hoss is the popular variety across the world, and uh, actually they used to put it in boxes and all like eggs. <clears throat> and uh, 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 the, uh, uh, the, I mean, um, reception or I mean, acceptance with reference to organic seems to be uh, very less because of uh, they are not very attractive and that the cost is very high. Right. And coming to the export, uh, we, we do a good amount of materials. Uh, 3.1 lakh metric tons we are exporting. Um, the cost is around 5,525 crores. We are exporting to different places. I've seen so many places. Uh, wherever I go, I used to when, uh, when take uh, the cloth and all. The most of the, uh, I mean, uh, this uh, stuffs and all from India. I mean, bunny either it may be bunny ends or uh, most of the uh, wiring stuffs you know they're from India. And a few of them from, actually, I mean, uh, uh, foodstuffs are also from India. Uh, one development. Actually, after 2011, uh, a uh, few months back, I visited. The development is, you can see so many Indian malls. So, they uh, exclusively, Mayura, I mean, Mayura is a mall, uh, uh, I mean, established by uh, Andhra people. Indian cuisines, Indian stores, Indian groceries, everywhere. This is a new development. Actually, previously, when maybe when in the last visit, now we could see only few malls like uh, <clears throat> uh, Walmart, then uh, Myers, Costco. There is one more French. Uh, I'm not able to get the name of it. So uh, uh, four or five malls everywhere. Then now you can see most I mean, number of Indian malls, Indian malls, Indian stuffs, and I purchased. Uh, 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 I mean, drumstick leaves uh, by paying 350 rupees a small bundle. A uh, small bundle cost me about uh, 350 rupees, wherein actually here we pay only 5 rupees or 10 rupees a bundle. So everything is available. Everything is available. Even uh, banana stem, soda stem, everything is available. Uh, say, uh, uh, when you compare with uh, the American malls with the Indian malls, you can see the difference. Most of the Indian malls like uh, Reliance Mart, Mart. say uh, uh, the, the, the materials kept inside, they are not up to the mark in the sense, no, it's okay for Indians, maybe it may not be for Americans over there then. So, uh, uh, malls are coming in larger way. Uh, they compromise a lot. You, you, you have to make it. You, they compromise a lot. Previously, it was not so. So, food is considered as a food. But uh, nowadays, they compromise a lot. Uh, damaged materials you can see here and there. Floors are not clean. Uh, Indians, Indian, Indian market is like Indian market. So, now, so this is how uh, I mean, and uh, we were doing uh, and good, I mean, uh, in exporting a uh, good amount of oils. Uh, processed to foods, cereals and millets, things of that kind. So now the criticism. Actually, we we embraced the uh, green revolution. It's nothing but organic. It's an inorganic way of doing agriculture. Uh, we uh, we introduced uh, varieties. We introduced chemicals. We introduced pesticides. We introduced fungicides. These are all against uh, organic uh, way of doing agriculture. So. Uh, a set of people waiting to, I mean, say something bad about uh, inorganic all the all the time. And you introduce anything, no, uh, there will be. There used to be few critics uh, to say bad about it. So now, what are all the criticism about green revolution? Conventional, local, locally well adopted genotypes are vanished. This is the first criticism. Some extent, it is yes. I don't know what to say, no. So some of the good varieties, they vanished. It's not possible for them to maintain. Say if I'm interested in growing uh, Lagan bird, bird, 
which is giving egg every day. Why should I go for a desi bird? Desi bird used to be three to four times in an year. Hardly I will be getting 40 to 50 eggs. Varun Lagan used to give me a 250 eggs. Laying eggs every day. So which, which one I prefer then? The one which, I, which is giving every day then is preferred against one which is giving once in a way then. So likewise, some other good varieties. Now, I, don't, I don't want to say it's a good variety. Some other varieties which we embraced for a quite long time, uh, uh, they disappeared from. And uh, not totally then. It's not totally then. Say, if you go to the university, you can see uh, germ blossom collections. Say, in TNAU, we have 250 banana germ blossoms. When I was maintaining, it was around 200 plus, 200 plus. Uh, and the papayas, 100 plus. In mango, uh, PK, I mean, periculum station is maintaining huge numbers. So, we are maintaining it, but. Uh, uh, it doesn't mean that actually uh, everything is lost, but we are maintaining it and there are quite a lot of institutions to maintain it. So di genetic diversity is reduced. New varieties are of poor quality. This is again a very important statement. New varieties are poor quality. And if you ask any old ladies, more than 80 plus, they used to tell, suppose if I cook rice and if you put, I mean, uh, pour water in it, we can keep it for two, three days. But these varieties, you know, new varieties cannot hold for, for a day then. Even sambar. Actually, if you make sambar today and you have to consume it today itself, you cannot keep it for the next day and all. Say all these things, the stuff we, what we, are, we were using now, they are totally different from the stuff what we are right now using. So, so this saying used to be there then. Actually, they, they are they actually, I, I don't want to say it uh, right or wrong then. But the, the traditional varieties, are somehow better, uh, I mean, uh, better than the latest varieties. Now, now we have uh, tomatoes, which you can keep it for 25 to 30 days, uh, which we, we call the rubber takali. And even if you throw it on the ground, it, it see it's, it's very difficult to, I mean, break those uh, tomatoes. And so uh, issues are there then. So new varieties are of poor quality, food and uh, fodder. They become poisonous due to synthetic fertilizers and, and the pesticides. There is a saying, the mother's milk, once considered as, as the one which is not adulterated, was adulterated with DDT. I, I mean, few things we, have, we need to discuss a little later now, right? So uh, the, uh, the soils, Structure and fertility are destroyed due to heavy irrigation and mechanization. Indiscriminate killing of useful insects and microorganisms. A vast population is suffering from cancer. Nutritious crops are displaced by cash crops. These are all some of the issues. Right. Now, the, the answer for those things. Actually, these, these questions were raised on one side. And another side, uh, 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 it's it's... It's our duty. I mean, most of the people who are involved in a green revolution. Of course, universities involved, department involved, uh, I mean, some of the MNCs involved because they started pouring chemicals, they started pouring fertilizers, they started pouring all other uh, main materials meant for agriculture, they started pouring hybrid varieties, all these things. They, they were supporting inorganic uh, agriculture. And uh, uh, the statement is this. Local genotypes are maintained as germ blossom at concerned research centers. So we are maintaining it, but not all. You see, if you go to uh, Tanjavur and ask those farmers, you know the traditional farmers, Jairaman or something, he is maintaining 400 uh, uh, paddy varieties. So those varieties, how can we maintain? Actually, normally what we maintain is we will find out the one which is resist, either resistant to disease or pest or for some one or other characters we maintain. This is for breeding purpose we maintain. It's very difficult to maintain a large number of germ plasm. It's not so easy. No, the cost involved seems to be very high then. So we are maintaining, but not all. But the system is there. Institutions are there to maintain all these uh, germ plasms. The NPPGR, they are maintaining the national level. And then IVPGR in the world level. So we are maintaining and uh, 
uh, the statement is not fully true and fully false then say you can't say it's right or you can't say it's wrong then now then that local genotypes versus uh, modern genotypes so here all the uh, uh, i mean genotypes new genotypes more are more nutritious and non toxic in the sense the 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 uh, uh, old one no the the local genotypes uh, but uh, say there is a, say another saying now all hybrids are not good 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 in the sense they are not fully uh, enriched with the nutrient or uh, good to consume or something like that so uh, these these things are there uh, but one one important thing is very good material you have but it is not sufficient for you to i mean fulfill your requirement means what to do with that so you you need 20 at least to feed your family but you have only four, four or five at least that how come you can feed the, the whole members of the family so this is the best material i have only four and the rest of them they let them start so uh, that is not logic then say we need to fill fill the stomach to start with then the quality of the material and all so uh, there is no logic saying that this is good material but it is available in very limited quantity means uh, somehow uh, you cannot satisfy the politician or the bureaucrats or even common people because they need at the end of the day some stuff to eat then uh, misunderstanding about modern genotypes this is uh, uh, one one thing here, here i want to actually tell is i mean now uh, we have approximately 20 to 25 banana varieties in tamil nadu let us discuss about them we have 20 varieties of banana or they all pure lines or hybrids when naturally occurring you accept it all thousands of mangoes all hybrids they are all cross crosses and we accept it when we cross anything for getting resistance or importing resistance how come it will be wrong we have puvan it's a hybrid nendran hybrid so if you see the evolution of those types no varieties they're all crosses natural crosses or mutants or whatever it may be when you accept that why do you worry about uh, uh, the, these actually uh, hybrids evolved by human for one or other reasons in i mean bringing in uh, uh, i mean uh, epis resistant gene into it or something but one issue is everybody is actually saying that gmo plants i mean uh, i mean uh, yeah. in implanting or i mean taking the gene into the so there there are some issues there that we accept gmo plants you have to study there actually all these issues uh, i mean because uh, genes of your interest you are transferring uh, sometimes so uh, uh, some genes which are not okay for human being or human consumption may cause some issues in later stages so gmo plant yes and in that too for cotton and all what is there then no we are not going to consume those materials so the issue is with the gmo plants but natural hybrids or hybrids with actually crossing to uh, genuine parents or parents of our own interest and the resultant uh, we cannot question and this is the actually uh, I men uh, I men uh, I men uh, issue raised by those people who are connected with the breeding and all so every grain and each fruit of such is hybrid and the consuming is not at all a issue then so this is how the, the crosses are taking place and uh, uh, pure line selected and uh, we are crossing it with the uh, uh, I mean gene of our interest or character of our interest and uh, we cross and ultimately we are getting a hybrid and how come we can question a hybrid uh which is which actually which will be giving actually you can avoid pesticide spray uh, you will be getting few more bags or something like that no so that way it is and uh, say so what is poison right what is poison and what is consumable in the sense no uh still there is an issue then anything you consume excess is poison 
In Tamil, there is a saying, Alavukki Meerinal, Amir Ramam Naik. Say, the snake poison is a medicine, provided if it is diluted and used for the purpose for which it is meant for. Say, snake poison is used. To say there, uh, say, snake poison is nothing but concentrated protein. So, if you consume as such, definitely we are going to, you are going to die because the system will not accept it, accept the concentrated protein. So, if it's dilute to the requirement or been to the level, definitely it is not going to be a poison. Then, say, the snake poison is used as a medicine. So, it is applicable for fertilizers. It is applicable for any other thing for that matter. That's what people used to say. So, your substance, when we apply it in excess, depresses the health or entirely destroys the life. So this scientist, he says, the right dose differentiation differentiates a poison from a remedy. The critical, I mean, uh, classical example is snake poison. So if you apply the quantity needed, uh, I mean, the right quantity, then it is a medicine. Then if you apply the wrong quantity, then it is a poison. So even uh, 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 this question I asked to most of the organic farmers, most of the organic farmers, are you taking sodium chloride salt every day? Are you, are, are you taking salt, sodium chloride? You are taking salt, no? To make your food actually palatable, you take salt. How come you can take salt? It's a salt. It's going to affect your health. When, when you take salt as a footstep, how come you can say, Applying the salt in the field, it's a wrong, wrong, wrong uh, men, I mean, uh, practice. Say, taking salt, normally the recommendation is 2.5 grams. At times, we used to take 8 grams to 10 grams. We landed up in uh, hospitals and doctor used to say, you are consuming more and the sodium level has gone up like anything and you have to stop taking sodium salts. So, since few bodies, they accept few other bodies, they, they are not actually. So if you are taking salt, a chemical every day, and how come you can say you should not apply salt to the field? A limited quantity is not wrong. That's what's the claim. A limited quantity is not a crime. Then it's not a wrong, wrong, wrong one. So we can consume small quantity. That's what actually. I um, mean, unfortunately, what had happened over a period of time in India. Most of our farmers are illiterate. Most of the farmers are illiterate. It's not possible for them to quantify the needed amount for their land to rectify the issues or something that to correct the issues. So I've, I've discussed with farmers, as I rightly pointed out, say for the past 25 years, I moved closely with my farmers. The farmer used to say, sir, when I use Actually, when I use this chemical called monocrita pass, I used to get a strong smell. Then only the insect will die. Say, off late, the smell is missing. So I'm using two or three times more. It is not the correct. Now say, his, his nose is used to, actually, when I'm mean, trained to that, it is not possible for them to smell the way he, I mean, he was doing it in the long back. Now, the recommendation is 1.25 ml per liter. You just go and ask any farmer for that matter how much they are using. Minimum two point, two times. There are farmers using three times. Whose fault is this? Probably a wrong material in wrong, wrong hands. We need to educate farmers instead of blaming inorganic farming. So, uh, if, if you use correct dose, there won't be any issue, but we are not using correct dose. So this is what uh, people used to say. Uh, salt is recommended. We are consuming every day a small quantity. Sometimes we exceed. Even all of you may be exceeding. The one who is looking, I mean, I mean with a, a long, a big tongue and all, no, they cannot restrict themselves with the 2.5 grams per day or Per day, the record means sometimes, you know, if you measure it, maybe you're exceeding 8 grams or 10 grams, but the recommendation is 2.5 grams. So now, uh, some issues about organic farming. Uh, the, this, these questions are very basic questions. Do, do the plants need organic material matter? 
right is organic matter the best fertilizer or the recommended chemical fertilizers hazardous to human and animals or the herb herbal pesticides are safe to human and animals herbal pesticides i mean uh, bio pesticides even even uh, uh, plant based pesticides or organic fertilizers always non toxic and safe or the premium price of organic produce affordable to poor hungry and malnourished mass of mass of population so i said no for the uh, educated mass americans they are saying no to organic because they need to pay one and a half times more they are not able to buy even uh, say there are people no when when uh, oil is available in the ration shop at the rate of rupees 20 a bag 1 kg is about 20 kg 20 rupees what what which which oil palm oil is only 10 rupees or 20 rupees 20 rupees say organic uh, 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 this uh, gingerly oil is 426 rupees how to buy it who is going to mean match the price who is going to buy it 426 rupees now a best quality organic gingerly oil is 426 rupees against the ration shop uh, palm oil is 20 rupees and if you see the bulk of the population they'll look for only cheap materials suppose if i produce 420 rupees what the foil how come i can dispose this who is going to buy it and these these questions are still lingering in your mind it's very difficult to okay then and uh, or the premium price of organic right can it meet the food challenges of ever growing population so uh, we now we need uh, uh, 325 metric million tons maybe in, in another one or two years in the in two, two, uh, yeah, uh, in 2050 the population will be 9900 crores now it is 810 crores right so that's met population so how to enhance the production by following organic materials using dung and other other palm produces how come so these questions are just i mean still there no nobody can answer to this do the plants need organic the one single is we have uh, uh, right hydrophonics and aerophonics why then we are not using any chemi I mean uh, uh, organic materials so we are getting more yield in aerophonics and when uh, hydrophonics it means without organic it's possible for it to get high yield so organic it's going to support it naturally i don't want to say it's uh, is a wrong uh, one or uh, uh, say with uh, uh, organic actually i'm not against it uh, but without organic plant can able to manage itself and then ultimately so this is one side <clears throat> uh, undoubtedly soils are imp- improved by addition of non toxic organic materials but but without you can produce higher yields so this uh, this is another one no is organic matter the best fertilizers the issue is you cannot correct any deficiency symptoms with organic there are 16 elements and your plant is running sort of boron what will you do in the organic way doing the plant is running sort of argon I mean, boron what will it do will it apply organic again and again so those things are not scientifically proved there are several recommendations they are not scientifically proved say if i if, if i'm running short of zinc what i have to do can i give that particular element alone so that i can rectify the issues no so fertilizers can be considered as the best fertilizers when you get need the nutrients in adequate amount at right time in an efficient manner this is possible only with chemicals say you, you shouldn't think that actually i am behind organ inorganic so when you discuss about say this is the easiest way to correct yourself you know the plants and where in the organic way it's very difficult and uh, not possible for it to 
So useful usefulness of chemical fertilizers. Uh, say this is very critical point. No, say I was also uh, astonished. Say most of the organic materials they carry quite a good amount of heavy metals. Those heavy metals are actually, uh, I mean, cadmium, lead, chrome. So many heavy metals are there. Four or five heavy metals. These heavy metals are very much in uh, uh, soil. It, it mostly it, it comes from the organic materials. So most of the organic, I mean, uh, farm waste and uh, poultry waste, animal waste, and all uh, they have plenty of uh, heavy metals. These heavy metals will get into the uh, plant system. So to prevent these heavy metals, the chemical fertilizers are very much useful. This this is one of the studies. Actually, we, I got it from Laurie and David, 1995. Phosphorus, calcium, and zinc prevent the entry of heavy metals into crop. So once heavy metal is into the uh, body, of course, into the body, it's very difficult to, uh, when, I mean, uh, uh, remove the heavy metals from the, I mean, your body, but they stay on. That's what uh, the science says. So this is one area where, so another another issue, you know, with reference to organic, there are about 10 uh, uh, bio, bio materials. These are all used to control uh, pests. Uh, starting from Ipomoea, Nerium, Datura, Calotropis, Castor, Parthenum, Lantana, Mexi Mexican Prickle Poppy, Agave, all these things. So the toxins available on the other side. No study so far to prove that these toxins are not existing in the final produce of the organic material. What will happen? Nobody, no, there is no study. We are using a lot of materials. Say there is there are quite a lot of studies about imidacloripate, how long it stays in the food. There is a studies of monocrutopas. There are studies in the with reference to so many pesticides and fungicides. But these chemicals, these toxins, which are very much present because these toxins are preventing the entry of another pest. No. Because of these uh, toxins only, pest pest uh, invading, I mean can, we are we are trying to stop. So these toxins are there. No study is there. And if you ask uh, the, the, the one with the long beard, uh, Namalwar is asking to use five plants. Anjali Kasayam, Pathali Kasayam. What is, what is the, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, uh, I mean uh, reviews that, reviews, are, are there any, any recommendations? Any research on those materials? So uh, these issues are there, actually, uh, very much there in the organic. And the entry of chem chem chemicals we already discussed. I say same thing. So it is there in the body system. So this is how the metals get into the body. Now, th this is very important one. See, the heavy metals in cattle manure, poultry manure, and pig manures. So if we test those menus, th see the quantity. The highest is from pig menu. So 612.23 milligram per kg. And chicken menu has enough, uh, I, mean, uh, uh, I mean, heavy metals. So these heavy metals, they get into your body when, once you use. So plant cannot discriminate uh, the, the nutrient which is available in the, uh, in the soil. They cannot discriminate. So everything will get into the plant system. They cannot discriminate. So what let's say the study says, uh, some of the chemical fertilizers they can actually stop. I mean, I mean, uh, I mean uh, the entry of uh, heavy metals for some extent. Say if you, if you use phosphorus, you can stop the entry of uh, heavy metals for some extent. But actually, not uh, uh, to, to the core in the sense, no, hundred percent you cannot stop it. So these heavy metals. From the organic sources, it's getting into the. It's here, I, I want to tell one thing now. At the end of the day, I'll tell you. it's over. So that the cut finally the multisynthetic. Multisynthetic is very much applicable in India. That's what the Paul was self telling in 1960 that in 70, the country will reel under the mine. 70. We were actually touching the mine now in the 70s. My father used to carry wheat. Because by then the cost of uh, paddy was so high, you no know, rice was so high. My my father used to carry pa I mean chapati. We we started eating chapati from 1970 onwards. 
chapati was not a common food during those day those times actually i know pretty well that when i was doing 6th or 7th standard yeah huh yes i mean wheat is not a common food for us we were eating only millets most of the millet millets and rice some extent no most of the uh, village people they used to rice once in a week three times a year and most of the times they eat only millets and wheat was introduced at the time of because we were getting wheat from other countries that some, some I mean, in, in other i mean punjab or something like that so his prediction i mean the paul's prediction was almost actually hitting us no touching us in the sense 60s he predicted and 70s india will really end up for mine somehow we escaped from it only because of green revolution or by introduction of new varieties and chemicals so this is what uh, right the natural chemicals and uh, are safe and the synthetic are hazardous this is a say <laughs> once again more than 1500 plant species contain some or other kind of toxic substances for example you take castor if you take small quantity of castor oil it's a medicine and 10 or 15 spoons of castor oil will kill you then likewise so many things so uh, the toxic substances like uh, hemoglutin in castor castor beans cyanic acid in lima bean so all these things are there then it's it's available in small small quantity if you consume in small small quantity it's not going to harm you then and if you consume more so even if you use chemicals at a at a appropriate level at a small quantities or or needed uh, amount it's not going to harm you unless otherwise you dump it you dump it so uh phyto phytotoxin the same thing we, we discussed and this this is how we are using the chemicals and unfortunately unfortunately uh when you go and ask for chemicals from the shop especially for human being there, we need a, a, a prescription by the doctor right doctor has to give a prescription like this this medicine he can take and this medicine should not be given without without my prescription not take all the dangerous chemicals which are available in the market who is giving prescription say it's say there is a system fault but you cannot blame the chemicals as such and even if you want type any chemical for example say uh uh i mean uh, paracetamol is there any uh, mean side effect or not side effect or not are you consuming yes that's what all the medicines doing good for your health they have side effects but you are consciously doing it what is needed you have to consciously make the farmers to do it consciously otherwise right now we have 140 crores by the time if these things are not happening the, the way we like we used to have only 30 crores or 40 crores or 50 crores we might have lost last number of people because of the mine we have now say 140 crores whether it is right or wrong is a different story we have so many people 140 crores from from 50 crores to 140 crores from 30 crores in the pre independence population now we have by 140 crores all these people might have died if these things ha- had not happened so science is very clear and you have given very clean sheet that you have to use this much quantity right before that no th- this is with reference to uh, mango uh, i mean i mean um, i mean um, uh, Uh, men noted in the uh, different countries so now this is the last uh, slide maybe last or before that okay then who is against organic farming state agriculture universities department of agriculture traders of agriculture commodity so i'll tell you one thing who is against organic state agriculture university is not against organic you refer any books you go and ask this actually a crop production manual the recommendation is 10 tons of farm yard manure per acre who is applying 
Are we in between? The university is in between the farmer and the farming, saying that don't apply organic fertilizers. It is. It's not possible for the farmer to apply. It is their fault. They are not maintaining livestock. They are, they are not producing organic manure the way they need or the quantum they need. One, one secret here I have to tell. I, I think this is in the year 1987. A farmer from nearby, probably he might be from Coimbatore region, well dressed, sitting in front of me. His, the, the question he asked me, this is the question he asked. Sir, are you married? It's a strange question from a farmer asking me who is not, I mean, no way connected. This it's nothing to do with his marriage. He's asking me, are you married? Yes. What is your salary? The next question. But I was puzzled, no? This, this fellow started asking my, my uh, marriage and he's asking about my salary and all. So I said, my salary, 1425. I'm very sure because the statement, the dialogue had happened, no? It's very much in my mind, very green. And the question is, actually, he was asking, how much, how much is your salary? 1425. Next question. Sir, you are getting girl for marriage, but I didn't get. You are, say somebody is giving a girl for me to marry. But I'm, I'm, I'm making 10,000 rupees a month. And nobody is ready to give a girl that. Say, I was little person. No. So what the hell? No, what I can do it for you? He said, we have. 10 buffaloes in house and each buff buffalo yield is around 1000 rupees a day my month and we are making 10,000 rupees a month and nobody is giving girls. Nobody is ready to take that gentleman. So this question is now to you again. Who will marry a farmer? The social status, whether he is actually producing or he is a rich person, say by seeing, you cannot actually uh, man, fix him as a farmer. He's a well dressed person. Making 10,000 rupees a month. And nobody is ready to give a girl for him. Say, this is the status. No, this is something con not connected with the organic. But the day I felt the society is not recognizing the farmer. Or, of course, actually giving the due respect to be given to him then. So, a pa person who is making a small salary of 1,400 is getting a girl for marriage. But a person who is making 10,000 rupees from farm is not getting a girl. This is true. I, actually, this is not a story. I didn't get it from somebody else. It happened to me. So, this is the status of Indian agriculture. This is the status of Indian agriculture. You go and ask your father. Can I get, marry a, a farmer? No, but you need everything from the farmer. He has to produce rice, he has to produce vegetables, he has to produce everything for you then, but you are not actually supporting him, not even marrying him. The only reason he had said at the time now, what he was telling now, sir, a girl coming to my house has to carry all this dung and all, cleaning all these things, so nobody is ready. This is one thing. Nobody is ready to do agriculture activities connected with the farm and say that's why actually we are not getting enough men animal i mean uh, pow, men, uh, men menus this is one thing the second thing they cannot go to cinema film cinema or film film or marriages and all so having animal in the house the morning and evening you have to be there then say this is how no the life has changed and we are talking about organic and inorganic there are quite a lot of people to talk about and these guys know they are not giving their girls to the farmer. He is giving his girl to the one who is working in the America and in some other country. Then. See, go on us. And uh, the farmer used to say humbly, let it be with me, this dirty job. You please be good then. In the sense, you take some other job. They are not a poor I am not okay then. So th this is the core is, you know, which, which says so the socialists are very much there. Scientifically, you can address this and that. 
but socialists are there and nobody is ready to support any farmer for that matter getting marriage i mean now most of the uh, farmers from tamil nadu they are looking girls from kerala they are looking girls from kerala i do not know why kerala people are giving and all so they are looking girls from kerala so we are not against it it's not the department traders nobody is we are supporting them then but unfortunately there are inherent issues in organic as i said getting a genuine price keeping people together and most of the farmers are very poor in actually that that illiterate then it's not possible for them to get the science based uh, uh, farming even some of the farmers they know who i mean they are well versed uh, i mean they are i mean good enough to understand what we are trying to tell even then they are not actually trying to adopt in the sense they are not accepting the views of uh, uh, scientists or something like that so farmers are getting low yield from their farm no non availability of organic manures this is very important thing due to change in the farming system no livestock no mixed farming difficult in handling huge quantity of i mean these are all some of the issues a very important issue is social issue which i didn't mention but anyway that's a major issue uh, so successful farm it's actually you have to do it very consciously understanding the basic of organic culture identifying the source plan your transition identify the crops good crop rotation the pest challenges and, and other uh, uh, control measures ready to keep good records say now the last question actually i do not know how many of you doing farming uh, i mean uh, involved in farming and all something you go and ask your father you go and ask your father how much you spend to produce 1 kilo of paddy no record will be there then if you do not know how much cost is incurred to get one to make 1 kilo of paddy how come you can fix the price if i know that actually the cost of production is 10 rupees i can ask for 15 rupees or 20 rupees okay you go and ask even one if one farmer is coming out of this is the cost of cultivation actually you can take out my there is no records as such there is no data available right if you go and ask a person who is producing bananas so chikida is the number one company across the country, uh, world chikida chikida is the uh, number one country as far as banana is concerned they are producing more than 52% of the bananas exportable bananas and the next is kabana then third is premier premier in del monte these are all big companies across the world producing bananas in large quantity if you go and ask what is the price of what is the production cost of one banana they will come about very clearly 37 pies a piece 37 pies of fruit so they can able to fix the price say when we are lagging behind and asking somebody is to pour money on my head how will how come it's possible see here agriculture is it's it's say most of the times no farmers are cult- men doing agriculture as a charity it's not a charity agriculture is a business and if you do business these questions will not arise and if it do agriculture as a charity nobody can help you when you do not know the price of one single banana and when you do not know the price of one kg of paddy how come you are import to fix your price no say if somebody is fixing your price saying 10 rupees is it okay or not nobody knows so this is the issue we are not actually maintaining any record that's what actually this is a big issue with reference bolak was telling the world peace will not be built on empty stomachs and hunger human misery do not build uh, i mean world, world peace with the hung, i mean empty stomach so uh, what his statement is the today's population is 810 and 2050 population is 900 and every day 10% of the population is going without meal one they are skipping one meal this is this is the reality so with all these issues in hand saying that organic is the best way and i'll kill another 10% or 20% how come it is so we have uh, we need a huge quantity of rice and i mean uh, food grains and every 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 day 10% of the population is not taking their dinner so uh, what he says improved varieties fertilizers and crop production chemicals are 
are denied, the world will doomed, not from poisoning, as someone say, but from starvation. See, the huge death will be there. There is a, actually, I, I know pretty well, one picture was rated as the best picture, camera, I mean, I mean the, the, uh, uh, the starving child was laying, and a vulture was waiting for uh, to eat. No, actually, he he's it's about to die. The vulture was waiting. So this this is how uh, the starvation and famine are being depicted. So uh, if you know, and I'm not against uh, uh, right right no, organic, uh, but organic is very important. Uh, it can be followed wherever it's actually it's affordable then. So if somebody, as I said, no, 420 rupees a liter of uh, gingerly oil, who will buy that now? So when it is available in 200 rupees and when it is available in 20 rupees, when it is available in 100 rupees, people will buy only those materials because the affordability is a big question. But organic as such right now is not affordable. It's not affordable. So when these people are going to make this is affordable and all these farmers, uh, Snam Malwar and all. If um, Nam Malwar is ready to give organic greens at the rate of 20 rupees a piece or bundle, I'm ready to buy. Who's going to give me 20 rupees a bundle? Say, we have, uh, I mean, a trader from up here, no, the, the Palamudu Chola, he asked, Sir, I need organic uh, greens. I said, The cost will go up like anything. So, 40 rupees, there are buyers to buy. How many buyers are there to pay 40 rupees and buy this? Thin population, very thin population. Say th this is how it is. And uh, this, this is the last one. I, I mean, uh, a guru asked his son, what is Brahma? The son said, Supreme Almighty. The son, I mean, the guru asked him to go for fast for 21 days. After completing the fasting, he asked once again, who is Brahma? Who is Brahma? So unless otherwise it's available, you will not mind mind it. So fruits are food is available everywhere. Then you are wasting. But now leaving one one grain one 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 uh, uh, I mean uh, grain or uh, uh, a piece of uh, rice, I will not leave it in the in my plate. I know the value of it. I know the value of it. So many people are starving. So many people are starving. They are dying. But you don't this I mean you you, you you cannot say when you visit German this this story actually made, made of men I men trade with German a person from India they completed their actually breakfast or something like that and at the end of the day they I mean uh, they paid the money but the the, the restaurant uh, owner called the fellow you have to pay few more few more amount in the sense no the cost is uh, twenty dollars or something like that you have to pay twenty five dollars then this fellow asked why actually in the bill actually you asked me to pay twenty dollars and he said another five dollars worth of material you wasted you don't you, you you don't have any right to waste this material it was produced by the national nations i mean property wealth i mean using water and uh, all other sources it's a national property. Food is national property. Even if you pay for it, but you know you don't have right to waste it. See, it's somebody else's meal. So when we are going to learn all those things, we do not know. We are talking about organic, inorganic, this way, that way, and all know. Wasting the food is actually it's 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 a it's a it's a crime again. In most of the developed countries, you will be charged for your wastes. If we waste, they will also charge for you. So this is how it is. Food is such an important one. Uh, uh, thing is, I'm 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 not for organic and I'm not for inorganic. At the end of the day, so if you ask me, are you for inorganic? Are you for organic? And uh, which way you go, you go. And if you like organic, you can go with organic. If you like inorganic, you go inorganic. But the only thing is. If it is affordable, if it is actually economical with, with your point of view, we can go with the organic. And if it is not affordable, that, that's, it's you to decide. But we are in the transitional period. We are in the transitional period in the sense we are self-sufficient at this point of time. 
you can take up organic but the the country actually been supported fully you know the total organic they are into trouble one such example is ceylon sikkim is reconsidering that is actually uh, organic state but it is reconsidering the organic problem is actually uh, say most of the countries are actually i mean getting organic material across the world you no know, they are actually into trouble certification is a big problem i mean satisfying the i mean uh, i mean uh, the standards is, is again a big problem it's not so easy it's not so easy people like us no, not having any records and somebody is coming and asking you to produce records and if you ask politician to give records they are into trouble then so now it's happening so if you ask records uh, men uh, men uh, men uh, from the farmers know what record you have whether you applied this and all so all all this maintaining records it's again a big big issue i mean when i am not aware of uh, the cost of production of an individual one i mean actually i am i'm i want to make huge money out of it there, there is no logic in that then okay this is what uh, now you can ask questions See, this this are all uh, carrots uh, i i've taken this picture when i visited one of the uh, vegetable farm uh, some four or five colors all different colors first time in my life actually i seen uh, different colored carrots okay then thank you very much and one of the process his his, his uh, uncle was actually cultivating uh, 30 cents or 40 cents for his home consumption rest is for uh, market so issue is different actually with one single uh, in, um, in these things no you cannot solve everything so here the very important thing is unfortunate fortunately or unfortunately most of our farmers are illegal to translate or transfer the technology way, the way we like even actually we can see quite a lot of people going and i mean taking medicines from the uh, shops they are not taking any doctors uh, uh, prescription this is the country wherein we live so we are not taking any prescription so when when, when uh, say things are actually very bad with human and what to do with uh, something other than In agriculture you cannot uh, force them to do this and that see if uh, uh, i mean if if you bring in legislation or things of that can uh, i mean uh, the most of the, the the politician they think that it's very difficult to implement all these things say if, if you issue one such you have to get prescription from department of agriculture what will happen what will happen tell me say uh, the ordinance is coming actually the government of india is saying that only with the prescription you have to give fertilizers or chemicals or things of things are like what will happen if there is no answer and most of the questions say this role secondary then no say what is needed is say say global gap is the world accepted certification agency global gap previously it was called as uh, uh, europe gap europe gap the global gap they never say you should you should not use this this that and all say this chemical if you yes you can use but thing is it, sh- it should be recommended by the university say uh, in the case of a mango if you use imidacloripate if it is recommended you can use imidacloripate if other chemical is not recommended you should not use see this is not possible for the farmer to practice see the, the list is given this chemical is for this particular you see we are not actually reading it that is the big, biggest problem so someone actually who is cutting the hair should cut hair only and if his cutting is we will find fault with him but in agriculture it is not so you can cut anything right so we are not educating the farmer and uh, you cannot control the farmer uh, the, the biggest problem with the farmer is it's not possible for them to see is a producer and he is not fixing the price it's at the mercy of the traders so so many loopholes are there in agriculture which loophole you are you need to fix to to when um, set right it which one you are going to fix it 
so actually by, by I mean that the end of the day when a harvest paddy or any crop for that matter or goa or something like that most of the farmers in goa in around kaimatur no they are ready to remove all the plants then i asked why then so sometimes it is 5 rupees sir then sometimes it is 20 rupees sir 20 rupees is okay sir 5 rupees it's very difficult sir it's not possible for them to pay the person who is picking harvesting the fruits so there is no stability there is no so the government is actually i don't want to blame the government so many issues are there beyond our control beyond our control so these issues are actually the core issues and someone with the dedication should work and i just leave it to you that you dedicated people come and do the changes it's very difficult so uh, price fixing is again a big problem and the controlling is a big problem and uh, we don't have any uh, men uh, men uh, the health officers to check whether it is genuine or not today i say one 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 information for your uh, men uh, these things no we have so many accredited laboratories across the country to test all these materials in a random basis and we have one such laboratory over there in our university toxicology lab these these laboratories what they do they collect random samples and they report it to the central government say the central government right now the role is what they do if if they cross the mrl then they'll give instruction to the local people stop this chemical suppose if mrl is high with reference to um uh, i mean uh, 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 imidacloripid in uh, dharmapuri district then they give signal to the dharmapuri traders and the department of uh, agriculture or horticulture stop uh, okay this uh, imidacloripid don't supply imidacloripid so this is what happening but they are not very strictly following all those things they are not actually hearing it if if you hear it then if you hear it that's a big problem the same problem with kerala in kerala no the elevation is high and the humidity used to be high and there they they found out that uh, endosulfon is very dangerous because uh, disintegration in higher elevation with uh, high humidity you know they they, they were never disintegrate so the same chemical in, in tamil nadu in chennai or here it, it is not harmful the, that chemical the endosulfon over there in estates of kerala it's very dangerous they stopped it and then the, the across the country they stopped endosulfon so these informationals are actually being passed on to the government of india but say to my knowledge this is not sufficient so i need to know whether the material which i consume is free from chemicals or not it's my right but it is there in some of the developed countries but not in india i need to know today i morning i have taken a tomato uh, ketchup or whatever it may be then i need to know whether the food stuff is genuine or loaded with chemicals or cross this mrl so that opportunity is not given to indians but it is given to foreign I men developed countries the under developed and the developing countries it's not uh, it's not that and then these issues are actually yet to be addressed say in a in a in a population of 140 crores with the so many states race all these things having one single law is not possible so how come you, you do all these things in one single stroke or something so uh, there are issues and uh, first first foremost thing is you need to understand what's happening around if you know the science very properly then you can preach people and most of the department people they 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 they, they are not i mean they they couldn't understand what's happening around so the, the first and foremost thing is knowledge dissemination if knowledge is passed on to everybody then they can understand what what to do and what not to do see this is this is this is very important see that, that's a reason why you educated people when you work with farmer or when you work with scientist or when, when you work with people who are concerned with agriculture you can easily tell them which is right and which is wrong then say at the end of the day i am not able to make a decision then because we, we, as i said no we are in the uh, cross grassroots level in the sense no we are we are very we are not very sure about which one we have to follow when i follow this quite lot of people will die when i follow this say the chemical effect will be there say which we have to go are you going to sacrifice your, your fellow uh, people 
by not producing I mean, enough enough uh, materials or actually you are going to give uh, men, uh, men, uh, a wrong material or actually uh, men, um, uh, stuff loaded with the chemicals which way you have to go it's a million dollar question <laughs> you cannot take any decision for that matter anyway understanding is is very important at this point of time and the whom's over is possible say a farm i mean actually I, I have a small piece of land in my house say if i produce all vegetables by myself okay this is the way this in the slow the basis no in all the villages they have small uh, backyard the place wherein they can cultivate their own vegetables and all so if, if you do by yourself you are very sure whether those materials are free from chemicals or pesticides and if you buy it from somebody else and i request my wife to buy leaves with the holes and uh, spots if it is very fresh and green say so most of the chemicals no the, the the chemical malathion is one having less mammalian toxicity that's the one chemical but nobody is using it the reason being is no that that won't give you the results no you're looking for suppose if you uh, apply malathion that is the uh, the, uh, the, the, the the mammalian toxicity seems to be the lowest one but now the latest chemicals are coming now some of those chemicals are actually with the lowest uh, uh, toxicity and uh, the uh, I mean the waiting period is very much less compared to the first generation second generation chemicals third generation chemicals the fourth and fifth generation chemicals are very safe right now the waiting period is very less but thing is all of them are sprayed with the chemicals say i stopped eating cauliflower long back i stopped eating grapes long back 25 years back i'd been to uh, um, in, uh, pune uh, for, for a training program that the training name of the training is arid zone fruits training on arid zone fruits in uh, and um, krishi pule mahatma pule krishi vidyapeet rahuri that's that's a center actually i, I undergone this training program say i had an initial problem no actually the food and all I mean, it's not not suiting to me and they used to give pogo or something like that no actually why pogo and we used to be very i mean now we used to take only idli dosa and all we can't see dosa idli and all over there in maharashtra then those stuffs is very difficult and i requested the organizers please give me a cup of curd then uh, they they were kind enough to give me give me a cup of curd once i started eating rice and cup of curd quite all the research people they asking cup of curd then the the, the the organizer said how come it's possible for me to give a cup of curd for all the all the fellows and this fellow is struggling and he is asking to uh, I mean, go ahead, I mean, I mean, live with a cup of curd and this is what finally when the training was over about to over we were taken a trip to to different gardens and one of the gardens is actually uh, five acre grapes wherein he, ha he had three varieties uh, one one variety is thompson seedless another variety is flame another variety is a uh, pusa seedless these three varieties i was so happy to see the farmer uh, he had a, a what a safari uh, coat and uh, with a car he came down to the garden i was so happy seeing a farmer with all these facilities having five acres of grapes i was so happy ah very good my farmer is actually living very uh, uh, i mean uh, decent life and all and uh, see he started talking in marathi actually i am not uh, very well versed with marathi actually i am not knowing one single word of marathi so the plate was filled with all three varieties I, most of the people started eating and my job is only to eat because i am not able to get what he is trying to tell so i was eating uh, the plate was actually i mean we are about to exhaust the plate there were about 23 plus uh, trainees and the last question from me to the farmer is this this is the question i posed on to the farmer the question is how many times do you spray for a crop of grapes from flowering to harvest how many times do you spray a crop of grapes from flowering to harvest the number of days from flowering the flowering normally is called calypro fall 
actually how many of you know actually normally the the united petals it is a very different uh, 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 flower pattern no in the case of grapes uh, unless other i mean actually they're all separate petals this is the petals are united and it, the whole thing is called a calyptera calyptera fall stage from calyptera fall stage to harvest 110 days okay the number of days taken from calyptera fall stage to harvesting is 110 days my question is how many times he sprayed he said 55 times say i started vomiting all the stuff i consumed all three varieties in different different colors one is brown in color another is red in color and the green in color i started vomiting 100 110 days 55 i stopped eating grapes i used to carry fruits only fruits to my friends whenever i visit any my any, any friends for that matter i used to carry only fruits most of the kids they hate me because this fellow will bring only fruits not chocolates say a girl of 3 or 4 years 5 years all they they they, they eat, i mean they like uh, chocolates or cakes nobody will eat uh, uh, fruits but i used to carry only fruits then i stopped carrying grapes so this is how it is and unfortunately uh, we we don't have a system to i mean gauge it in the sense uh, we have uh, I mean, this is the last question we'll stop it i think we are all being bored now the last question last last day they sings now how many of you know suppose you buy a kilo of fish and you came to know that the whole thing is spoiled with some or other stuffs it's spoiled it's not consumable to whom you will be reporting please tell me huh safety officers tell me you are all educated no some of you are going to get your degree in in in, in one or two years to whom you say this is the status of india this is the status of india we do not know to whom you have to report there is a culprit around the state around the i mean uh, in city called himself as health officers they never check any officers any 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 uh, i mean uh, vicinities and they are responsible and we are not able to identify the person to whom you have to report and this is the status of so we do not know to whom you have to report and these people will appear once in a way once in blue moon that when some 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 death is happened they, then they'll go all check so 24 people died okay then they'll go and check and most of us we do not know to whom you have to report this is health health inspector nobody you, do, do you know where his office is oh including me do not know but i know the person but i do not know actually to whom you have to report so this is a status the re reason is even if you consume a wrong material somehow your body adjusted in a span of a week or 10 days we have very strong system a fellow from australia visiting india for playing cricket staying in five star hotel after consuming five star food will get into stomach bug out of 17 members some 3 4 members will become will get stomach bug why are you staying oyster hotel suppose if they consume yours and mine he will die here itself an australian from actually australia if they consume your stuff he will die his stomach is such a delicate one but our stomach is is fill it up our stomach is very strong and capable to we are capable of uh, managing now see this is what uh, uh, the tropical people stomach or system and uh, most of the uh, uh, delicate stomachs over there in temperate area and so now we need to know much about uh, these things and uh, throw yourself uh, educate uh, your own friends uh, i mean um, in the sense no um, all these things you know, we need to pass it on to the farmers that's more important at the end of the day they are the strong st stakeholders of agriculture production is so most of the techniques are I mean these things are it, they stay with the within the room 
it's with the scientists it may be with the uh, and students it may be with the department people but actually it is not penetrating into the people who are really responsible for that for, for it so farmers they should know that with the last of uh, these things let me conclude we conducted a project called precision farming and a bunch of farmers were selected and they were trained on techniques and everything right we visited a farmer's farmer a farmer who cultivated chilies uh, ramsami guys ramsami we visited uh, mr ramsami's house and the house and uh, the field is one in the same no the same the field is actually the house is located well within the farm and, uh, he, he, and by, by the time we visited he was not there then we asked this uh, uh, ramasamy's wife why is he then she said uh, had been to the shop to purchase uh, some um, uh, materials for cooking and all ramasamy came with uh, a bag uh, and uh, in his bag no chilies were there green chilies were there and he is one who has got 3 acres of chilies then we started asking you what ramasami you are growing 3 acres of chilli and you are not using your chillies for your cooking purpose instead you are buying it from the shop he said say since because i am buying it from shop i do not know what's happened now what type of material it is but if i use i know how much chemical i applied so he is very well very much aware that how much chemical is loaded on his material but when he buy it from it uh, from the shop no he is not aware how many times it's not so this is the status all the farmers they are aware that how much they are applying and they cannot consciously consume it because they are all loaded so that's the reason why they buy it from them. so with this uh, thank you for listening yes please ah oh. <laughs> you say there are three labels available <laughs> a green yellow and red blue or red blue 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 green blue red you say red no uh, with, with the caution you have to use it because they are very strong enough no and the yellow is uh, somewhat better and green is safest so say safe means uh, the molecules are not very strong enough to stay in the produce for a longer time and uh, the green label is malathion as i said and the rest of the chemicals they are all uh, they, they they classified under red and uh, this is for the understanding of the farmer and uh, uh, the efficacy of the chemical is uh, based on this uh, and when you use uh, red color you you should be very careful whenever i actually i i be with my uh, farm workers i used to give them uh, mask Uh, gloves, everything, and I spend a lot of money uh, uh, for purchase of all these things. But unfortunately, nobody will wear it. So you just give a mask to the a person who is actually spraying chemicals. He will not buy it. So why I am not very sure. The, the Indian way of doing things is totally different from somebody else. And in, in a foreign country, they ask, "I please provide me a mask. Please provide me a gloves." please provide me a gum boot so that i'll be safe and come out of the uh, farm you no know, after doing the uh, operations and all but unfortunately we are not uh, i mean actually embracing the, the the latest or the safest things and you suppose if i ask you to wear helmet then you will be keeping helmet in the uh, what I mean uh, petrol tank but no we are not wearing that so as and when we see the policeman in india this is the attitude of indians but unfortunate so yes he is a very difficult question no we have not tested uh, the water we are drinking uh, uh, we are not tested the, say you are taking every day no the water purchased from the local uh, person no, who is supplying this uh, fortunately unfortunately we are not having any problems issues related to that so once you get uh, issues then only will be actually pondering into like no um, getting into it uh, um, and, and uh, we'll, we'll be of course looking for all those things but right now uh, see the, actually one difference i could make no here actually whenever i drink uh, bottled water it used to be very sweet 
and especially if you drink uh, aquafina it, it 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 is so sweet now yeah so i do not know which chemical they add in now but it is fast moving and it is so tasty but i visited the america america so so stayed there for about more than 60 days whenever you go and uh, drink water they are not sweet they are added with salt so all the uh, uh, drinking water is not sweet it's not actually i mean so, sometimes you know when you very sweet you, know, you have to i mean you, it's very difficult to quench your thirst and so you will be you keep on drinking more and more then but there actually uh, uh, most of the water is actually again i mean the standard will vary from uh, uh, country to country i mean that's what actually i believe uh, even now we are not uh, much worried about it and uh, i am not very sure whether this health department is working on or working on these issues or not but it is a very important question wherein we need to ponder in the sense you no know, we need to put much more uh, uh, i mean a closer look uh, to see or to i mean um, come about with whether the, this drinking water is good enough to consume or uh, or not uh, this is a big question i am not uh, very sure uh, what to answer and all yeah any questions please any question from priyagulam uh, sir yes so after a quite long time i was giving a lecture sir is the same enthusiasm and in your style sir as i have some questions sir yes sir uh, regarding um, organic inputs sir, the recommendation is the best problem in my perception sir recommendation is the best problem in organic culture sir uh, for our uh, inorganic fertilizers everything is defined this is an energy conductivity nutrient conductivity is defined for chemicals also everything is defined but organic is very difficult to recommend sir uh, what is what, uh, what is the concentration how much quantity because that's uh, because to, this is one sir next one is the when we receive the organic source array of the array of formulas are available in the market sir it's very quite confusing sir all the pare farmers they want to Uh, purchase any organic inputs. Uh, visiting the organic shops, many inputs are there. Many contents are even the learned scientists. This is new for us. Some of the uh, contents are very new, sir. So this is a uh, so this is a biggest problem in uh, uh, recommending the uh, uh, exact quantity of uh, inputs or chemicals, sir. Yes, this is a very valid question. Question in the sense. Um, Uh, what should be the soil organic content to start with so most of the literature they say they 2% is the minimum content when you, when you have 2% of or, or organic carbon so it the, the 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 soil can able to support the plant but if you go and test your soils it range from 0.1% to 0.5% maximum the soil if you apply huge quantity of organic material then it will be 5.5% so the the issue is your soil is not rich with rich in organic the simple reason is hilly areas the content will be higher wherein in the plains it is very less in the, in the plains you no know, it will be easily digested and uh, content will be very low and if you go to hilly areas the microbial activity will be very slow and the content will be on the higher side so the content is very important to start with i mean soil organic content this one the second thing most of the operations are not standardized or concluded how much to apply when to apply how to apply this are all here says someone will say this right someone will say that right and there is no standardized practice for organic and each one will come about with their own experience it's only an experience but those experience now we cannot take as the recommendations this is second thing and very recently there are huge number of empty number of organic materials hitting the market number of organic but unfortunately we do not know who has given the certificate to those, those two products say now if you if you want to control yesterday i visited one of the farms actually papaya farm stop virus perfect and they claim that it is it can able to control 
papaya ring spot virus what is the result whether those fellow know um, and handed over to handed over to us to test verify whether this chemical is working or not say if you see the chemical cost is about 600 rupees small bottle say uh, this is this is a uh, we are in the primitive stage again i mean uh, um, most of the recommendations are not i mean uh, concluded in the sense uh, test verified and uh, these small small companies know they cannot give candidate chemicals to us and to come about with uh, this the uh, I mean, I mean uh, recommendation from the universities so what they do i mean um, they they get into the market and uh, somehow they are convincing the farmers to use those materials so most of the most of the things are not standardized we are in the initial stage uh, see fortunately we have a separate department for organic uh, uh, agriculture so it's their duty to say yes, you can throw it away like no ask people to uh, I mean, um, and test their material before they get into the market so this that's very important um, most of the times no uh, we are very tentative most of the recommendations are very tentative and if 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 it controls your your fate is good then and if there is no control then you cannot go on find fault with those people then. yes uh, this is very important one we are in the initial stage uh, we need an organized uh, system no no the department has to take up all these issues organic is all the time good so when say when you do agriculture through inorganic definitely uh, uh logic wise no say scientifically like not prove yourself uh, prove that uh, organic is right or wrong then but uh, the case say in all those people 100 years old they were not wearing any spectacles and all by then no say th- these people they were all healthy they were all healthy but it's another these things no our total expected uh, the, the living age was for about 38 or 40 initial stage now with all these chemicals we could able to live up to 100 so i mean it's it's very difficult to conclude and say this is right or this is wrong but with all this here says and all organic seems to be very healthy food organic seems to be very healthy food this is only here say and uh, uh, i cannot prove it you know so unless otherwise you conduct separately this and that and uh, proving yourself that this is with a lot of uh, nutrient this is with less nutrient say uh, when you get 5 liters of milk or 1 liter of milk in the in the case of kangayam uh, uh, say it is enriched the cost is 100 rupees a liter why in uh, actually if you get it uh, may, may get the milk from um, um, uh, i mean um, uh, jersey it's only 40 rupees a liter so somehow it's rated and it is good or we all know but scientifically it is very difficult to come about whether this is good or bad or something that no but the testing law may prove but we are yet to start or yet to come about with any such uh, trials good evening everybody and i am most privileged to thank our uh, former dean horticulture dr uh, tn balmon sir and also my respected guide and chairman i am very proud to thank him on this occasion <laughs> because because i am the first phd student for him so i always have that privilege isn't it so um actually i am very thankful to you sir none other than you can handle this topic sir in such an excellent manner actually one month uh, before i approached you sir for the class but you were at your uh, son's place and you were also ready uh, to deliver the lecture online but i was not satisfied because uh, always uh, his gestures and interactive sessions uh, it should be enjoyed by the students uh, instead of uh, going through online it will be better if he comes in person so that's why the session was uh, delayed and uh, today we had it at the end and um, he is not he is not a person who uh, gets the information from internet and books and all those things but he is a person with uh, full uh, practical experience and he shares with everybody wherever he goes uh, for an example uh, um, what i want to tell is i was the first course associate for his uh, uh, course on uh, tropical fruits i think sir while i was in srf and first practical class um, i told what lecture what practical we can handle then he told just you go to palamudur and get all the fruits and make uh, make the students to eat all the fruits so that they will remember what is the taste what is the sugar acid blend everything and unless otherwise from the book 
they can learn by eating and tasting and they can they can discuss among themselves so it was uh, uh, it's a kind of uh, uh, taking lesson by him so i really always i admire our sir and i just wanted my students also uh, to have his experience and uh, i mean exposures uh, so thank you very much sir for uh, sharing all your experiences um thank you sir thank you very much sir